NUSA has started their nationwide hearings in Cape Town yesterday, which will help set the prices and tariffs for ESCOM. NUSA will, over the next three weeks, conduct hearings across the country in a bid to recoup from a financial shortfall in the 2017-2018 years. ESCOM announced in October 2018 that it has asked NUSA for a 15% tariff increase per year for the next three coming financial years. Now, attending and participating in the hearings is ESCOM's Chief Financial Officer, Caleb Kassim, a representative of the South African Local Government Association, the Mining and Energy Industries, as well as the Organization Undoing Tax Abuse, or ARTA. But joining us telephonically, we've got Nomfundo Masetti, Electricity and Piped Gas Regulator at NERSA. Nomfundo, thank you very, very much for joining us. It's good to have you on the line. Uh, thank you, Lian, and uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So yesterday was the first day of the hearings with regards to ESCOM's requested 15% tariff increase. I suppose it's, it's, it's difficult to, to predict, but the reaction to that 15% increase from the public has, has not been too positive. But what are your feelings and your sense for these hearings, what, what, what we can expect out of them? Um, uh, yes, it's still early uh, for NERSA to form any uh, impression on the application from ESCOM. We are still um, interacting with the information submitted to us, the projections and the basis for ESCOM to ask for a 15% increase. Mm. Uh, you will recall that uh, we're actually looking at two applications currently. Okay. One is the regulatory clearing account for the final year of the MYPD3, uh, which is uh, the fifth year, 2017-18. So that one is backward looking. So we're looking at costs that ESCOM says it has incurred over and above what was um, uh, approved by NERSA. Uh, in 2013. So ESCOM is looking at recovering those costs. So yeah. that's one application and it is backward looking and we're still doing some verification and uh, also trying to establish whether ESCOM has evidence to support those additional costs that it says it has incurred. Mm -hmm. So that's one application. The second one is forward looking and that is the MYPD4 for the next three years. And ESCOM is requesting um, um, NERSA to allow it to recover certain revenue that will enable ESCOM to produce and supply electricity. Yeah. So we are looking so for ESCOM to do that. It has to come up with certain projects and assumptions. But those assumptions must be uh, justified with the ESCOM capability of um, producing electricity at certain volumes that is the performance target that ESCOM has put forward and what it will need, you know, the assets that will assist ESCOM in producing the amount of electricity and okay. also the sales volumes yeah. that it says it will produce. Okay. So that is the kind of thing that we're looking at and we think that at this stage we're questioning um, the, the increase in the sales volume given the uh, the, the, the decline in the demand and the decline in the sales volume which resulted in the revenue gap that ESCOM um, has come forward to NERSA asking the NERSA to allow it to recover. Okay. All right, Namfunda, we know, we know, we know the, uh, the, the amount, and that, of course, is that 15% that tariff increase that Pakamani yes. Khadebe is asking for. But again, and I, and I think this is where we find ourselves in a very precarious situation, why should the consumer be burdened with such high tariffs when we all know about the internal wranglings within ESCOM and uh, the mismanagement. Why, why should we be held responsible? Well, remember that part of the, you see, when it's a forward-looking application, what they say they will need to perform, it's one thing, because there will be costs that are already incurred, such as the cost pertaining to um, uh, you know, the, the, the assets, the plants that uh, contribute to the provision of electricity. So we are questioning, is that given the fact that we know that some of the plants are out of service, we also know that they are facing serious generation and, and, uh, issues at ESCOM currently. So we are asking them, 
how are you going to uh, manage to produce this amount of electricity when we are faced with these challenges? We're also questioning the fact that there are very low um, coal stockpiles at the moment. Mm. So um, all of those things are things that we are questioning and say, um, how realistic are your assumptions here? How realistic are your projections? for you to then ask for um, a 15% and to ask for this amount of revenue yeah. that you say NERPA should allow you. So we're still really um, trying to find some more information and justification and we'll apply reasonableness uh, mm. before we take a final decision. But at this stage, it is still very early and we still hear other stakeholders like we did yesterday, and we're still going to continue to other provinces as well. Yeah. I, I have to just question you on, on, on the, the coal stockpile. You mentioned that a low coal stockpile. We've been hearing the exact opposite, that there is a lot of coal. Have you done investigations into this yourselves? No, we haven't done any investigations uh, uh, on our own in terms of the uh, stock prof, uh, stockpile, coal stockpile. Um, and um, still uh, trying to get um, information from ESCOM uh, with the different, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a coal, um, um, you know, uh, uh, reserves and, and to understand what, what was the cause of this problem, having they anticipated this. And the indication is that they were aware uh, uh, sometime in 2017 that they might be facing this challenge. Uh, and we asked them why couldn't they act in time to make sure that they keep the right levels of uh, coal stockpile as is uh, required in terms of the grid code. So this is this is this is part of uh, what we are now looking at in terms of uh, possible non-compliance by ESCOM. So it's a different investigation altogether in terms of non-compliance, but not we haven't done or we haven't gone further do uh, investigation. Yeah, one, one would think that you would need to do that um, because right now you are taking ESCOM on its word and are taking what they're saying is valid. But there's just been talk about the, the whole coal issue is, is not the issue at hand here and that they're actually playing you. So, I mean, should NERSA, will NERSA be embarking on an investigation to actually find out for yourselves before we, the consumer, are burdened with a cost? Of course, we will do that. Okay. We will probe further, and that is why I am saying that issue of the local uh, coal stockpile, we are looking at it from a point of view of non-compliance, a yeah. possible non-compliance by ESCOM. So that will be on, uh, an investigation on its own. Then we will also, as part of that investigation, um, and cover whether or not um, ESCOM should not have been in the position that it is. Uh, today. Yeah, because I mean, the, the reality is that time is not necessarily on your side. I mean, a decision should be made by the 1st of March. So uh, mm-hmm. the hearings will conclude at the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have a month in order to make it. In February. In February. February. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me move on just in terms of, of uh, talking about this, uh, this increase. Now, we know that the consumer price index is, is around 5%. Uh, I mean, is, is it fair to go above that for an increase for ESCOM? Well, um, well, it, it, well it, we, we, uh, it depends whether or not it's a measure. But in this case, when we look at the uh, application, we don't only consider I mean, the CPI. Uh, the CPI will be considered for the purposes of economic impact. But it is important for us to consider the provisions of the uh, electricity regulations act and in terms of whether or not the costs that are claimed uh, or that are required by ESCOM um, are costs that are prudent. So that would be the kind of or the standard that will apply in our analysis. But we will look into a, a number of issues in terms of the impact and uh, as well as the, um, the, the relevant um, yeah. um, factors that are mm. specified in the legislation, the reasonableness of the cost, the fact that ESCOM has to um, operate in an efficient manner and the areas in which ESCOM should be saving costs or cutting down costs, all mm. of those things are things that we will be looking at 
it yeah. is a, 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 an understatement. Certainly. And what about non-complying municipalities? I mean, the reality is, is that the, 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 the municipalities are owing a lot of money and a lot of the debt that ESCOM finds itself in. And I mean, that number, uh, it, it's sitting, it was at 380, uh, 380 billion rand. It's now sitting at over 419 billion. Now, the reality is, is that the municipalities responsible are still not paying that money back, but the people that are paying are going to be held accountable for the people that aren't paying. So, you know, what, what's going to happen with the municipalities? It's a different investigation. NASA has already commenced that investigation and it will be making a decision soon with regard to that investigation. And you must also understand that it is ESCOM that is taking that amount. The municipalities have not had an opportunity to also put forward their side of the story and contest the figures. And we know that there is some of them stated a number of challenges and, uh, and disputing the amount and also the impact uh, or it is the concerns that they have in terms of the interest that is imposed by um, ESCOM uh, on the municipalities for the debt. So there is a number of things uh, that affected on that debt uh, uh, between ESCOM and the municipalities. So some of them are, are also disputing the amount that are put forward by ESCOM. But yeah. NERSA uh, is already doing an investigation on that, and we do have a report and there will be a decision that is taken okay. as to what is going to happen. And if the municipalities did not comply, and that would be an issue of non-compliance, and that's how we'll deal with it. All right. We have to, unfortunately, leave it there for now. Uh, Norm Fundo Masetti, who is Nurses Electricity and Pipe Gas Regulator, thank you very, very much for joining us on Morning Live. Let's take a break. Yes. We're going to be talking about counterfeit goods after this and uh, the impact that they're having on the South African economy. Stay tuned.